Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Uh, Cirrus 973 Sierra Delta. Engine loss. Uh, north of Mansfield, uh, circling for uh, off airport landing. But it just came to me, and I did not have a single bit of fear. I'm Jason Miller, a full time professional flight instructor. On the Final Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back. In this episode, I'm talking with Cirrus pilot Mark Eppner, who recently had a forced landing in a field somewhere in the Midwest, Indiana, Ohio, something like that. Mark did an awesome job putting the airplane down. No one was injured, the airplane was undamaged. He made a YouTube video about it uh, that's linked in the description below, so you should watch that. We're gonna cut to that video here just to sort of set the stage, and then we're gonna go to Mark and I talking about this experience and what led to him having such a successful outcome. On April 26, 2022, a Tuesday, I had three more aviation firsts, and it wasn't just that I went up and it felt like a new flight. And I got to be honest, it wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but it's a first nonetheless, and I want to share it with you today. So the first item that I experienced was this. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Uh, Cirrus 973 Sierra Delta. Engine loss. Uh, north of Mansfield, uh, circling for uh, off airport landing. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Red Cirrus 973 Sierra Delta. Uh, engine is uh, gone and landing north of uh, Sierra Delta. This is Skywest 5747. You said 73 Sierra Delta. Where, uh, how far north of Man? Last calling Mayday, say again. Uh, Sierra 973 Sierra Delta just had an engine blowout, and uh, I don't know how far north of Mansfield, but I'm landing on a field here. Okay, 73 Sierra Delta, I'll hand it on to ATC Jimmy. 973 uh, Sierra Delta, we'll pass that information as well to ATC. Fly the airplane all the way to the ground. Welcome. Coming close to down now. Negative. 73 Sierra Delta is what I heard. I'm going to let uh, ATC know. 973 Sierra Delta. It was 937. Uh, 973 Sierra Delta. Yep. You're safe. Nice job. Good job. Nicely done. You know, obviously the thing, and, and I have, I've got questions to follow up on this, but obviously, and you addressed it in the video, but the thing that stands out about this particular uh, incident is that you didn't pull the chute, right? And there are, you know, that's the big thing in the Cirrus, right? And I think <laughs> watching you and your instructor in the video that you produced for YouTube, it's just obvious. You, ha you know, that was one of the questions I wrote down. Had you ever done this before? Had you ever practiced engine failures in the Cirrus? Had you ever really thought through gliding the airplane to a landing? And um, this stuff might sound obvious, but you'd be surprised. There are many, many Cirrus pilots who wouldn't, who first of all, have never seen that before and therefore wouldn't consider it, would have gone straight to the chute. So a uh, huge credit to, to your instruction. And I think all through the, the video that, that you made, you're talking about um, how your mind was sort of steeled on the task at hand, the analytical part of your brain mm -hmm. was put away, like all of these things is like, my first thought is you had some really good flight instruction. Um, I, I think I have, and, and I have, um, you know, a tendency, I, I, I don't know that I worry about this because I don't think about it much, but I, I take pride in being a safe pilot. Doesn't mean I'm perfect, I'm a private pilot, you know, so I'm not flying 121 somewhere, but I, I try to do that. And the interesting thing when you t start talking about pull the chute or emergency approach and landing, you know, like I was doing in that one as I prepared for a commercial rating, is I brief this kind of thing and um, even on takeoff, I'm taught you're on a Cirrus at the first 500 feet because I have a G3 and the newer ones at 600 feet. Uh, up till 2000 AGL, you don't think, you just pull. 
And that's why I think a lot of Cirrus pipes do it. So here I was technically in that range because I was somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 feet. Just happened I was 90 minutes into a two hour flight. Right. Um, and so, but it didn't come to me. And, and I've gone very public with this and everyone has been so respectful to me, but on the Cirrus boards, why didn't you pull the chute? You know, right. your odds thing, it, it's a safer thing to pull the chute. And yet on my Beechcraft board, they're saying, oh, great, you didn't need the shoot. You know, good job, good job. And, and again, everyone's respectful. But what I learned about this for all pilots, and I'm not focused on the Cirrus side, is if you're flying a Bonanza or 172 or a DA-40, that you can put yourself in a position to be able to handle as best as your makeup is. You know, I... I some people said, oh, not everyone would respond to an emergency like that. I had zero fear. I had zero fear, and that's what I, I assumed well, I would have a lot of fear. Yeah, I mean, um, well, I'm sure every individual is different, but you don't get to where you are without really solid training. Um, and mm -hmm. and d did you ever do the Cirrus factory training? Not the Embark. It was somehow I missed out on that. I asked for it. But I fly with a CSIP. I have a couple of instructors that I fly with, and one happens to be a CSIP. And, you know, he's actually, he was all right with my decision. <laughs> you know, and, like, you know, it ended up well. But, yeah, I mean, uh, well, there's, there's, you know, and I don't want to throw, I don't want to throw Cirrus under the bus because they are producing a massive amount of airplanes. They are training uh, a huge number of pilots, and they're doing a great job of it, right? They're putting safe yeah. pilots out there. So they That's have to have, a very standard uh, system. But if I were to pick a bone with them, I think like, for example, you talked about, you know, between 500 or 600, depending on the year in 2000, you just don't think you pull the chute. Um, I, and that number came way down, you know, back in 2008, that number was 2000 feet. You were supposed to not pull the chute below 2000 feet. And over the years that, that minimum pull altitude has been reduced to 600. And one of my concerns with, with that particular thing is that it doesn't take into account human factors. You know, that if you got a test pilot to pull the chute at 600 feet, all things considered, it's going to be fine. But in a real situation, take like the fatal takeoff accident in Sonoma in a Cirrus where they did pull the chute and actually just levered right into the ground with open fields all around them. It was a fatal accident. I think the pilot might have looked at the altimeter, saw 600 feet, let go of the stick, reached for the handle, you know, pulled it down. Meanwhile, the whole nose of the airplane's coming down. You're 400, you're 300, you're 250. Mm -hmm. And you pull it thinking I'm at 600 feet. I think there are human factors in there that um, aren't covered in, in the factory program. So I'm a CSIP also. And whenever I teach Cirrus candidates, I'm doing power off glides like you see you doing in your commercial training and making sure that Cirrus pilots know that a wing is a wing, that airplane can glide, you know, because uh, I'm not sure the factory these days in their standard program shows pilots that. You know, the, 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 the glide to a, to a full landing. Look, I'm a fan of the parachute. I really am. I would rather fly an airplane that had it than not. I mean, it's an extra tool. But I think it's really important that pilots balance that with uh, training on how to glide your airplane because the, the parachute's not going to apply in all situations. Um, and I'm not throwing serious under the bus. The factory training has to be general and kind of apply to all situations. So I really think serious pilots and pilots of all levels should get continuing education to make sure they've seen this. And that's, you know, I credit Mark's instruction, but there's also huge credit to him. Uh, he's getting his commercial, even though he doesn't need it. He's constantly training. He's putting himself in situations where he can be ready. And when he's flying, He's looking around and making sure that he knows which way the surface winds are blowing and where he would go. I mean, all of that contributed to, to his success as well. Um, here's a clip from his video of him working with uh, a great CFI. The engine just quit, Mark. What are we going to do? And the chute is not available. I, well, I'm going to pitch for 87. 80, 88 is actually the best glide speed. Take your pick. Make sure you land with the furrows, though. Yeah, so right below my left wing. All right. My plant. Let me see your uh, where you're going. Down to that one, that brown one. Oh, yeah. Just to the west of that row of trees. Y yeah. Got it. I like it. You're on a high downwind. What do we do next? Can we restart the engine? So I remember it. Three, two, one, check. Three things have to do with fuel. Mixture, 
adjust mixture, fuel pump on, switch tanks. That'll usually get the engine running again. Fuel pump is on? Yep. Good. Two things with spark. We need spark, right? Make sure your mags are on both. Yep. Maybe even cycle them off, then back to both. Don't do that now. But yep. And then the one thing with air is alternate air. Select alternate air. That might be the reason your engine quit. Okay, so having done all that, you've done everything you can do to restart the engine. Now it's just a matter of getting the airplane safely on the ground. Right. So now it's all about judging your rate of descent and when you apply the drag. You'd also be going on 121.5, mayday, mayday, mayday. Sierra's 3, Sierra Delta going down at about 30, 30 miles northwest of O'Hare, or you could say relative to 3CK. So now just fly your airplane. Look, Keep your speed safe by lowering the nose. All right, smoothly go around, add power. You've got yeah, the that, solid. that person was not a CSIP. Oh, he was Okay. No, but he was a triple seven captain that retired from United with forty thousand hours. <laughs> was a designated pilot examiner, and that's why you heard him say, "And the shoot is not available because he knew it was going to be from preparing for the commercial yeah. uh, check ride." And the last thing a DP is going to allow, yeah, I'll just pull the shoot. Okay, pass. <laughs> right. Well, it's just so important, I think, that serious pilots see what you are seeing in that video, and it's really good on you that you're doing continuing training, that you're getting your commercial, that you're putting yourself in those situations, uh, because I think it's all of that that really led to the success that we see, you know, where you're talking about not being afraid and having a very clear idea of what was next, what needed to happen, and getting the job done in a safe way, which is what we're And, all and to your to point, it, that's why I pulled up that other video He's even down to the mayday call. I heard him in my voice is saying, <laughs> mayday, 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 say it three times. He said, uh, th uh, seven, three, or three Sierra Delta, and I used the whole thing, but I'm this far. Actually, I said, I don't know how far north of Mansfield I am, between 15 and 20 miles. Right. But it, it, again, my, my learning here is that by flying with people like yourself and, and others, we as pilots, as private pilots, a commercial or ATP, it doesn't matter, can give our brain the right stuff, if you will. Uh, so when the when the poop hits the fan, right, <laughs> yep. that that our body will, our brain will be able to take that. And I have a data point of one, so I don't want to overextend and say I'm an expert in how the brain works, but it was just so clear to me. I, something I have never been in. I had less than two minutes before I was going to be on the ground talking to people, saying I'm yeah. okay. Yeah. But it just came to me, and I did not have a single bit of fear. It was total confidence. I saw a spot. I'm going to land. And if things had gone south, let's you know, people have said, "Oh, what if there had been a rut or the ground was too, too soft and you had flipped and killed?" I, okay, that would have been a shock. But it didn't, and. What you also saw in the video is 30 minutes before this, I was saying, hey, I'm flying lower than I normally do. Yeah. What would you do? And I'm looking, all oh, the furrows run north, south, or east, west. Well, I got a tailwind, so I'm going to do a 180. Mm -hmm. And then 30 minutes later, I'm doing a 180 onto a brown field, not a green field, which I've also told is a better yeah. choice. So I got a 10 to 15 knot headwind. So now my ground speed is much slower. Keep the nose wheel off. Don't stall high. I mean, it just worked out like I was told to do it, and I don't remember doing it. It just happened. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> hey, that's why we call it flight training and not flight education. And whoever gave you that flight training, you owe him a thank you call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I told him, you know, I owe you one. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. A huge thanks to Mark for coming on and uh, sharing his story. You can find the full conversation up on Patreon. That support is huge in helping me get these videos out. Also, a huge thanks to the sponsors. Remember that ForeFlight is the essential app for aviation online at foreflight.com. And when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that little alert bell so you get notified of uploads, and leave me a comment below if there's a video you'd like to see me make or react to. You guys are the best fans on the internet. I'm Jason Miller, and until next time, be safe and fly your best.